I've invited these two ladies to be on the show to discuss their healing techniques, discuss the story behind Harambe House of Wellness, um, and to talk about some really important things. So I hope you all enjoy the show today. I'm excited. We even have a demo for you, um, and I'll let Sunshine introduce that later on in the episode. Um, but I'd like to go ahead and get started. Um, and first, just uh, I'm gonna um, before I'm gonna ask you about Harambe, but I want you all to just talk about yourselves a little bit in the first place. Okay. Um, I'm Ife Wilson, and um, how I got started on the path of healing or becoming or becoming a healer. Like I always knew that was my purpose on earth. Like I've mm -hmm. always wanted to help women. Mm -hmm. And um, as I got older, um, I guess it became more prevalent. Mm -hmm. So I started out my, my day job. What I do every day is mm -hmm. that I am a daycare provider in my home. And so with that, I, I came into contact with, um, although I take care of the children, mm -hmm. I also start taking care of mommies too. Mm -hmm. They would be like, so they would come and they would sit on my couch and they would tell me their situation, mm -hmm. their problems, mm -hmm. you know, want to work out solutions. And so uh, I'm also the mother for women and grandmother of two little women. I sit here and when these sisters be telling me about talking about grandma, I'm like, oh, yeah. And so I just <laughs> think, and, and I just truly believe that um, they are my purpose as well, I guess, mm. to, I, I'm trying to put it into words. Um, but, in, and then Sunshine was one of the women that I met doing daycare. Yes, and she cared for my daughter. Yeah, and that's how we met. And then y'all connected. Mm -hmm. We can, mm -hmm. and, and, and our connection, it, 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 even when I stopped watching her daughter, mm -hmm. there will be times where we may not talk, and then we'll talk, and we'll, we'll talk for hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll talk for hours. Mm -hmm. And so um, when her friend passed away, who, when we'll, you know, she'll tell that story mm -hmm. later, mm -hmm. uh, which is part of the reason behind Harambe. Mm -hmm. And we talked and I said, you know, I just believe there are so many women who are suffering silence mm -hmm. and we need to do something about it. Right. That we need to create a space right. where women can come and mm -hmm. they can share their problems, mm -hmm. the things they're going through without fear of being judged. Yes. We can hold space for them. Yes. And hear them without the criticism. Yes, Absolutely. And, 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 uh, and allow space for women to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know, I was reading an article on the way here about mm -hmm. strong black women mm -hmm. and that how there are times when we need to be outside of a door where we lay our burdens down mm -hmm. and walk into a space where we're safe. Just safe spaces because, yes. again, you know, part of I want to hold space just for that one minute mm -hmm. because there's so much judgment about black women, about our disposition, mm -hmm. about how angry we are. But if mm -hmm. anybody could just stop and think for one moment, there are no spaces virtually where we have just where we're allowed to be vulnerable whether it's even when we're taking advantage of in relationships mm -hmm. yes it's charged as our fault because we didn't see it coming wow. yes you know there's just not a, you know we're the primary caregivers for the children yes. we're, we're we are the backbone of the workforce wherever mm -hmm. we are um and it's difficult so the fact that you all are creating this space of safety is what attracted me um in this immense way mm -hmm. Sunshine, you want to talk a little bit about you? Yeah, I, well, I'm just going to uh, kind of piggyback off of what she was saying. Mm -hmm. I read an article, it was a long time ago, on how women um, are the, they're the, the coaches, they're the, the nurses, they, they do all of this. And back in the day, we mm -hmm. were tribal. So yes. you had the elders taking care of the children. Yeah. You, know, you had, you know, the young, they out there hunting and, you know, getting the food and preparing and, you know, things of that nature. But here it is today, we're, we, we carry it all, mm -hmm. you know. So um, how I got into healing was really through me, like needing healing on my womb. And um, I, you know, I wanted to find a way to do it naturally. So, um, so yeah, I started researching because I had to get my ovary taken out Ooh. and it was an emergency, you know, situation. So when the other one started acting, you know, a little weird on me, I had to find a natural way to do it. So that's when I sought out Yoni steaming and, um, yeah, so that, yeah, Yoni steaming that, and that helped me 
heal my own wound. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you know, my great grandmother, Native American, twenty-two children. You know, would go out. You know, pick stuff from the earth. You know, feed it to us. You know, that kind of stuff. So it's in it's in my nature. It's in all of our nature. It, because that's the indigenous nature. Of earth. I was just posting about that last night. Yes. I think that's. Y'all forgive me because mm -hmm. I, I again I'm not here to insult anybody, mm -hmm. but I do I believe that's the greatest sin of Christianity is that it separates us from our indigenous it nature. Does. Yes, because it it's does. the indigenous cultures, mm -hmm. the indigenous uh, spirituality is more in line with the maintenance of the earth, and the earth is mm -hmm. a partner. Yes. You don't realize the oh, earth is our oh, partner definitely. in our yes. spirituality. Mm, yeah, that's both for me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but it's true. It is very you know, true. because that's what you're tapping into. Our mm -hmm. healing medicine comes from there. Mm -hmm. Our vibrations, you know, the crystals, all these things that are intended for our mm -hmm. our wellness. Absolutely. Really, are and it and really just for me. Even in the since the last time I saw you, mm -hmm. just I feel more restored and renewed by yeah. just reconnecting with nature. Mm -hmm. uh, this young lady, Ashley Mathis, one of my past guest came by and took me out to the park yesterday and we mm -hmm. just sat in the rock mm -hmm. and, and just you know with the feet in the grass just yeah talking and reconnecting with the earth and it does something for your it energy. does when you're grounding or even mm -hmm. when you you know people make fun you know call people tree huggers mm -hmm. yes but actually hugging a tree I'm yes. a tree hugger. yes yeah. it will ground you it will calm you yeah. you know it will yeah. exchange energy with you yes well. you can literally feel I had a tree tell me its name before just like I'm Sarah you know, and I believe it because again, I'm just, you know, I, when y'all walked in the door, I was talking about my dog and mm -hmm. how my dog spoke to us. You yeah. know, I have my guests come over and they're tripped out because my dog, they don't really know her like I know her, mm -hmm. but somehow the expressions that she makes, she's able to, it, it, this is energy. Mm -hmm. yes. This is really our communication. This mm -hmm. is our our energetic connection with our yeah. universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before yeah. words, that was vibration. Yeah, it was vibration. Yes. Otherwise, how else can a dog look at you and you understand mm -hmm. exactly what that dog yes. means? Right. She can't mm -hmm. speak, but she's speaking to you nonetheless, mm -hmm. or he's speaking to you. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So I believe that. Yeah. That's why. That's why. Uh, for the elders, they get the dogs and the animals because yes. of that, that mm -hmm. connection. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To the spirit. Yeah. So you want to talk to me a little bit about Harambe House of Wellness. Let's talk about, um, you know, who is Queen Harambe yes. and, and what you all do at Harambe House of Wellness. Okay. So I am um, a homeschooling mother and I started a group, uh, Brown Brilliant Homeschooling Co-op. Mm -hmm. And in this group, there was a lot of natural women, you know, juices and berries, you know, coming to me in the Gwinnett area. And, um, and one of them, she, you know, she was all into the healing arts. She did the mm -hmm. Qigong, she did massage therapy, mm -hmm. and uh, she was just this very powerful force. So uh, we befriended her, our children grew up together, mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately, she was a victim of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, um, you know, I would try to talk to her, you know, and things of that nature, but mm -hmm. Uh, you know, she tried to keep it quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't want to really speak about it. So uh, when the domestic violence happened, it impacted our community greatly. It just shocked us. Um, and from there, you know, we were like, you know, we need to create a space mm -hmm. for the community to speak about their pain. Mm -hmm. Because not only was she in pain, Mm -hmm. That man was in pain as well. Mm -hmm. And what made me realize that is when we were doing, you know, I homeschool my girls. So we were doing like a forgiveness ceremony. Mm -hmm. And my youngest baby came and sat right on my lap. And I mm -hmm. said, who would you like to forgive? And my baby looked up at me and said, I want to forgive Anissa's husband. And it, it shook me to my core. Um, because he uh, dealt with abuse, sexual abuse, sexual trauma. Yes. And so... You know, who did he have to speak to? You know, right. you have to look at that because to do that, to do what he did, the mother of his children, there had to be mm. some type of pain, mm. some right. type of trauma. Right. And um, so we created Harambe House of Wellness, named after her uh, stage name because she was also a poet, as, as we are poets. Um, so Queen Harambe became Harambe House of Wellness and homage, paying homage to her. Yes. Wow. That is so beautiful. That is such a beautiful story. And I think um, the thing that really attracted that to, to me, to that story the mm -hmm. most, is the fact that you're holding space 
for your friend and your whole holding space for her husband mm -hmm. um and i think that's really where it li lies in you know we, we joke about right. uh fragile masculinity right. and all yeah. these things but at the end of the day i hope that you know many of us have seen um when they see us by now mm -hmm. um and it, you know there some of our men are holding such traumatic pain yeah so much and yeah. and that's one of the things like we often have events mm -hmm. for women because we know women are going to come yes we're going to seek our healing yeah. yes um, however, with men, mm -hmm. men do not create spaces for other men mm -hmm. or for each other to to be vulnerable. Right. right. To to lie their burdens down. Mm -hmm. To ex to be expressive in a way. To be vulnerable. Yes. It's 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 slowly and sh but surely. I've seen maybe three or four podcasts mm -hmm. about, you know, one in, that I follow on Instagram when, when men open up, shout out to when men open up, okay. um, you know, there's, uh, you know, men are starting to get into these spaces and I'm grateful for that, mm -hmm. but it's women led. make no mistake. Oh yes. Because yes. we're the ones that it's, that started having the conversations mm -hmm. and, and brought this up and now they're embracing it. Why? Because our intention mm -hmm. is to create that space. Mm -hmm. for them to be vulnerable mm -hmm. um you know so this what you're doing is absolutely beautiful yeah. this I, is why we have the room we hold the space yes yes we, we're deemed the nurturers yes so and the creators yes and, and the creators. Creators. Yes. right I mean. that's right and that, i share and again because I, I feel that you know again this is all part of my shedding of my western perspective right. of mm -hmm. spirituality it's in my book i wrote that poem i am she yes. you know mm -hmm. that's my revelation that we've we've attached we i think uh, again part of in my estimation the sin of of christianity is detaching women mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not they just have. people of color yeah. but women from our power I, I i called her yesterday i watched this um mm -hmm. i guess it's a podcast mm -hmm. it was charlemagne the god and mm -hmm. comedian jared carmichael is mm -hmm. that how you say his name jared Gerard mm -hmm. carmichael mm -hmm. Gerard, yes. and and i passed it a few times but one, that's one of the things they touch on. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're talking about the infidelity of their fathers, but they're talking about how Christianity kept their mothers almost bound. It Just it, it it does, and I, that's why I say, and this is not a slam, no. but this is enlightenment. This is about Absolutely. understanding. You know, it, it there's nothing in Christianity that connects you with the earth. There, everything in it 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 teaches you that your source is outside of you. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've got to look mm -hmm. to a father. I've got to right. look to a man. Mm -hmm. Well, if I may, I exist and, we and I'm made in God's image. Right. If mm -hmm. I'm made in God's image too, then how is God just a man? Yes. Right. Even in the old, even in, in the Torah, uh, one of yes. the names that the Jewish people have for, for God is El Shaddai, the many breasted one. Yes. Wow. Okay. yes. That's a nurturing quality. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's a, so Absolutely. to me, you know, this we're really what it's done is it's ascribed one, a single gender. Mm -hmm to mm -hmm. an entity that created that's all mm -hmm. yeah, even absolutely. and like an ifa now because mm -hmm. i know that you all practice i'm learning that um you know even there there are orishas and energies that are mm -hmm. not that are neither male nor female mm -hmm. and and i think part of that is also how we marginalize you know the way people are marginalizing gay and transgender mm -hmm. people because it came that's the notion that it's male and female and somehow that male is the male is the dominant force mm -hmm. but even in native american right i'm learning that because that's that's ancient culture right there mm -hmm. they call was it two spirit mm -hmm. it's two spirit mm -hmm. right so we have to acknowledge that god is not boxed into a gender right it's mm -hmm. not boxed into only a male right. authority mm -hmm. there is five because he did that we're the chosen vessel. We're the only people that can bring life forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, there, yes. There's an imbalance. You yeah. The Father, the Son, but who's the Holy Spirit? Hello. Okay. So Hello. you cannot have a father and a son without the a mother. woman. You have to have the Spirit. Spirit. right. Yes. Yeah. So we the are balance. part of the Trinity, but they don't want you to know. Yeah. That. Right. A good right. book to read is called All Women Are Healers. Oh yes, that's a really good. See, I get my pen out when these women yes. see it. because this is always oh, this is a part. This is, you know, um, uh, an amazing journey. So let listen. I know because we could just talk. I, I, yes, I you know, yes. I, my my time with you all was always awesome in this way. But let's let's talk to me a little bit about your offerings because that's what really mm -hmm. attracted me. And in particular, I mentioned the sound healing, mm -hmm. and um, yes. Sunshine brought her 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 crystal quartz bowls. I'm, just, I'm excited. I'm getting. 
knowing I'm going to hear them. But um, so talk to me about some of the ways that you all uh, promote healings in the community. Um, I'll start. Uh, Reiki. Mm -hmm. We do energetic flushes, mm -hmm. which means we're clearing your chakra and your aura and your meridians. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, we do yoni steams, mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. coach, sunshine does life coaching. We teach different classes. We have seminars, mm -hmm. um, yoga. We Absolutely. We have yoga. Um, it's, she really hit a lot of yeah, it. Um, and, and the sound healing. Oh, and the sound baths. Yes, yes sound baths. So I can give a quick demonstration of that. We'll start okay, look. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so these are made from the stones healing, healing force. Isn't that um, beautiful? That is beautiful. Yes. Now, see, this is, oh my gosh, that was just, I could, I know y'all are, are listening through audio, but sitting next to it, I can feel the vibration yes. in my body. It. You can feel it here. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times I feel it in my heart. Yes. So each bowl is attuned to your uh, chakras, to your energetic fields that run along your spine. So we have seven of those. Mm -hmm. yes. So the large bowl is? This is for the sacral chakras. Interesting, mm -hmm. I have on a sacral color, which is orange. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is for uh, your sen sensuality and your creativity. Okay, wait, I got some orange. Oh, yeah, I got yes, some orange yes. today. Yes. I'm going to receive that. <laughs> and this is the crown chakra, which is your connection to the creator, um, mm -hmm. who you see as the creator. Yeah. So that's just, this is the crown chakra. Oh, that's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I was attracted, that I think that was the first thing. Um, because I wanted to book the sound bath service mm -hmm. and the sound bath service. Imagine that the beauty of those two bowls, imagine just being in a room mm -hmm. and there's seven of yes. these nice. and they're being rung and everyone is just there and you're silent and you're just feeling the vibration. It's life changing. It's, it's life changing. It's, it's yes. life -changing. Life -changing. And, yes. and, and when you do a session just for yourself, mm -hmm. you are, I put you on the massage table and you are surrounded. Mm. By the bowls, yes. and you put yeah. on an eye patch, oh, wow. and it takes you away. Wow! Yeah. I have to literally bring the clients back. Yes. Relax. Yes, <laughs> yes, because I can imagine just that feeling, that vibration. I, I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. I like I said, I have a small one. Mine is brass, mm -hmm. but and I've I've heard of the crystal ones, and mm -hmm. never. This is these are my first time seeing. Yeah. Um, and, and those are absolutely beautiful. So uh, that's just something to consider along my journey. <coughs> Excuse me. You get me. It's allergies, as mm -hmm. well, always yeah. for me. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm just so excited to interview you guys and speak with you, um, particularly because it resonates with me. You all know I just purchased, I just published <clears throat> uh, my book, uh, mm -hmm. republished my book, Life Fun Times Twenty One, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and in that book, I I tell my story of trauma recovery mm -hmm. uh, from a poetic perspective, mm -hmm. right, with a po poetic approach. Um, uh, so because I, you know, been on this journey mm -hmm. of acknowledgement and understanding and acceptance, I've learned <clears throat> that I'm um, starting to learn about crystals and chakras. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I started, you know, looking into Ifa because I know that I, 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 you know, have been a Christian for a long time, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I haven't found any relief. Mm -hmm. I haven't mm -hmm. found any sense of healing mm -hmm. um, in, in that time, and I needed that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I promised myself I would give my soul what I needed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what led me here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So if you all, one of the things that you all, um, I also know what you all are, you're all Reiki masters. Yes. yes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're also very spiritual. Mm -hmm. and, and all of that really ties into your perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. can you talk about that for me a little bit? I can tell you a little bit about Reiki. Um, Reiki is, um, you know, I grew up in the church, just mm -hmm. say that. Um, uh, I was Lutheran and uh, what else? Baptist. Mm -hmm. So in the church, you see the land of the hands, you mm -hmm. see the prophetess, you see all these healers mm -hmm. in the church. Um, so what we do is 
that is just a different language. Mm. So yes, that's that's all it is, and, and, and they place fear on it to make you kind of stay away. Yeah, you know. Um, yes. But yeah. Reiki is a gentle, energetic uh, flow that I don't even have to touch you. Mm-hmm. You know, hands you can be hands on or hands off is, is you know because a lot of people are trauma. They have trauma, so they might not want to be touched. Mm -hmm. So you can just lay the hands. And basically how I like to explain it Mm -hmm. is you have uh, veins running through your body. You have uh, the nervous system running through your body. And if any of those get blocked, the doctor will go in and give you some medication, do some type of operation to get Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. unblocked. So we also have an energetic system. We were speaking of the chakras, mm-hmm. the aura, the meridians. You know, the meridians are what acupuncturists use um, when they put the, the pins and needles in, okay? Mm-hmm. So when those systems get blocked, um, most people don't know how to go in and get that clear. They're just feeling stuck and you know, they're full of fear and they, won't, they can't move like, oh, what do I do? Mm-hmm. Or Reiki helps go in and remove those blockages. So that's the best way that I like to describe and, and the it. other thing I want to touch on, because when she said you don't have to touch with hands, right. you can be on the West Coast. Absolutely. Because it's energy, mm-hmm. we can still send that energy to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't, we don't have to be in the same physical space mm-hmm. in order to give you the energy of Reiki. Right. We've had, mm-hmm. we've had clients from Austria. Yeah. Mm. So. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, um, Oh, to, to, it resonates with me. See, this is what I mean while I've stepped away. And this is, this is not what that show is about, but it's about what, what resonates with me and what mm-hmm. feels true and what I can see and right. bear witness mm-hmm. to. And just what you spoke about, well, a couple of things. One, when you talk about Reiki, mm-hmm. I believe that's what Jesus was doing. It's not that Absolutely. I don't believe in it. I believe that, you know, people look at the laying of hands on mm-hmm. as force. Yes. that's what I've experienced. Mm-hmm. And, but you don't really see examples when you talk about it. When Jesus was laying hands on people, there were it wasn't a prepared stage thing where somebody's behind you to catch you and they're yeah. running around. Uh-huh. And pow, 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 you know? yeah. <laughs> it was an exchange of energy. And, yeah, and so um, and it wasn't that he was because imagine that much energy leaving. Mm-hmm. And I remember when the woman touched the hem of his garment, mm-hmm. he felt the energy leaving him. Mm-hmm. I believe that Jesus had was this what we call inside of Christianity, what he was mastered was really Reiki. Mm-hmm. And because it's a healing energy and it's a transformative. He was a higher vibrational being. He was a higher vibrational being. And I, and I know, you know, for somebody to explain this to me before, I wouldn't necessarily mm-hmm. get it, but now I get it. Over right. the past month, I've been through something mm-hmm. and I didn't understand. It just, it materialized for me just in the past two days yes. that my sickness in my body mm-hmm. I, I was struggling with asthma mm-hmm. and struggling with pain, and the pain was so significant. Nothing I took mm-hmm. was helping. I even mm-hmm. I'm seeing an herbal alchemist, mm-hmm. alchemist, and, and even those things, those remedies weren't working. Mm-hmm. But once I relieved the situation, mm-hmm. my my breathing opened up. Oh, wow! And, so and you're able to breathe again. Mm-hmm. And I'm breathing. I'm I'm not usually yeah. every morning. I'm spending the first hour coughing and clearing my chest and I can't move I'm weak in the bed mm. you know um, but I get up now I'm sleepy I'm getting the best sleep I've got mm-hmm. it's almost like it's the, the energetic shift mm-hmm. and so and, and energy is is real you mm-hmm. know oh very much so mm-hmm. yeah yes. you, when you hold I think it's worry mm-hmm. it taxes your kidneys is that yes. correct when you hold anger it taxes your liver yes mm-hmm. you know and um, your heart Okay. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Your mm-hmm. heart, yo oh gosh. That's why a lot of people don't think you should forgive. But that's where you hold yes. all of the the heaviness of not forgiving. Or at least letting it go yeah. and just letting it be. So yeah, that's that's the heart chakra. And they actually and this is the thing that's most interesting to me about this time that's mm-hmm. most interesting is that I've kind of, I'm a bit of a nerd and I follow a lot of science. I, I mm-hmm. love science. Mm-hmm. And I'm finding that science and med- because medicine is just science driven. Yes. So science is now saying they're confirming that people are, you know, they say, can you die of a broken heart? Oh, mm-hmm. And there's, I forgot the name they call the condition, but they talk about the constant stress it puts on your heart. Yeah. Man, that forgiveness is for you. It Most is. definitely. It is. Most definitely. It is. I read an article, uh, about a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. this couple had been married for 60 plus years. Mm-hmm. The wife passed away. Mm-hmm. The, there's this lady that they love. The husband, he was well into his 80s, mm-hmm. went to go 
brought her friend's boat, the friend was on the shore, paddled out to put her ashes on this lake. Mm -hmm. He drops dead and he dies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from mm -hmm. heart Yeah. From a heart attack. Mm -hmm. and, well, and, it's heartbroken. Yeah. And, well, you know, and you know what? It does happen a lot. Mm -hmm. a lot. And, yes. we, and we all know, I bet you we all have somebody in our family. Oh, yeah. Where mm -hmm. the husband and wife are married a long time. Uh -huh. And oh, yes. she dies. Oh, yes. Even he, he goes. It's like yeah. a matter of time. Just in a year. Yes. He's gone. My, my, my grand, well, my stepfather, uh, his parents, mm -hmm. he witnessed that. Yep. She, she, he, he went and then she, she went. Yeah. So, and yeah. I witnessed it. As a teenager with my mm -hmm. great grandmother and her sister, mm -hmm. they have been together their whole life, even marrying and living in the mm -hmm. same household, mm -hmm. raising family mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And my great great aunt passed away in April, mm -hmm. and I think by that within a year, less than a year, the next February, my great grandmother passed away. Yeah, That's it true. makes sense. Yeah. And even science and medicine says now, right. right? Neuroscience confirms that we're energetic beings, and when we yes. die, our energy doesn't die. Yes. You know, and that's beautiful. So it seems wow. like such a, a, a wonderfully beautiful thing to be able to 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 learn. We can now understand that we can tap into it. And mm -hmm. you know, um, I was telling my friend yesterday when I was 29, we didn't. There was no conversation. No. There were no spaces for this. No. no. For this type of growth and and, and healing and Not spirituality and awareness. No, Not at all. You know, you have been considered to be weird. Mm -hmm. you know, which I embrace my weirdness. I'm yes. okay with being weird. I'm okay with being different. I'm okay with being the odd one. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I definitely, I've been weird all my life. Yeah, I experienced mm -hmm. um, telekinesis yeah. at eight. So, but I didn't have anybody to talk to about it. You don't know what it is. You know, yeah. I'm making my bed float and I'm like, wow. You know, but I couldn't go to my Christian family because they were, oh, we got to pray this away. Yeah. You know. So, you know, I've always been, uh, if you would, just third eye, as they say, woke, you know, whatever <laughs> that is. So, you know, born with gray eyes, and I was born in call, which means with the veil over my, my mm -hmm. eyes. So to be, and again, to, to go back to the church, the prophetess. So when you say psychic, it's, ah, yeah. but a prophetess, you know, we're okay with that term, but just not a psychic. Right. You're evil mm -hmm. if you're a psychic, but yeah. you can be a prophetess in the church and be and right, and the real hypocrisy in that is that we forget mm -hmm. the majority of people, and it really grinds me to see people running around, my name is prophetess. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, stop that. Mm -hmm. Because it's more, it, it's rooted more in ego. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the, even mm -hmm. in Christianity, right, because we're, it's like we have this understanding, but right. then we kind of ignore what mm -hmm. the word actually says. Right. And in a prophecy, it's not prophecy. It's not meant to be heard for everybody mm -hmm. if it doesn't ring true and it right. doesn't come with confirmation. Hey. Mm -hmm. So there's most of the prophecy that you come forward in the church, mm -hmm. there's no confirmation mm -hmm. coming. It mm -hmm. is uh, what we see in mm -hmm. the Christian church is a prophet and they're telling you, right? right? But the whole idea is if, if Jesus, right, really did die so mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit could come forward and mm -hmm. we can have that connection with right. God. Why am I seeking a prophet? Mm -hmm. Why am I seeking a pastor mm -hmm. when the whole intent is for me to have this direct channel? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. You know, so that to me, it just mm -hmm. feels like a heavy yes. deception. And yes. it's so great to have this, have you all in this space. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about what makes you, what, where's your joy? What, what about mm -hmm. what you do brings you the most joy? I can, oh, <laughs> I can give a story on, um, there's a client that, uh, was near, she was suicidal, um, mm. and things of that nature. And I am not a therapist, and mm. you know, I must say that. So I always ask my clients, you know, you can reach therapy if you need therapy, but right. you know, they, they sought after life coaching. Mm. So um, a lot of times they don't reach the spiritual self, which is so, in the emotional self and mm. the mental, all of that is important to, yeah. to reach out. But now mm. this, this client is running, uh, several businesses. She's traveling. She's living her best life. Um, so yeah. So that, it, that brings me joy Ashay. to, to just yeah. see people find themselves and get comfortable with themselves and love, love on themselves. Right. You know, that, yeah. that, that brings me joy. I guess joy for me is we host, um, self care mm -hmm. and self love events. Yes. And to see, see women just really take care of themselves yes. and make space to take care of themselves yes. and being okay with taking care of themselves yes. is what brings me joy yes. and which kind of motivates 
me to continue to do this because even with us with what we do mm-hmm. i can even speak personal for myself sometimes after i get caught up mm-hmm. and being mommy and business owner being whatever the different many hats that i wear throughout the day right. and sometimes i go wait what did you do for yourself today mm-hmm. You better say that. And I was just telling somebody yesterday, a little certain somebody, about self-care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so and let's talk about that. Yeah. And, and we talk about the self. I think in this society, um, you know, we're taught, at least I know for me, I was taught, I heard a lot, you're selfish. You're yes. Selfish. Oh, my you're gosh. Selfish. And I couldn't understand it because I was the baby. So mm. my brothers were, you know, we were five years apart. So my oldest brother is 10 years older than me. Mm-hmm. And then the next one is five years older than me. Who am I being selfish with? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not so, taking anything. You know, mm-hmm. you can never understand that. And it teaches you to not protect yourself. To yes. be so selfish right. that you grow up defenseless. You grow up without boundaries. Now. Or okay. even with, you know, and I've spoken to her about this before. Mm-hmm. Uh, my two older daughters are mommies. And one of the things I always tell them, make time for yourself. Yes. Yes. Take care of yourself. The baby's going to be okay. Just mm-hmm. take care of you. And I think mm-hmm. we grow up with this thing of, of because everybody's dependent upon us, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. we don't put our children first. Mm-hmm. That's what I used to always say. Just, your children yeah. come first. Your children come first. Your children come first. Mm-hmm. But if I place my children first, and if I'm suffering, then how am I taking care of them? Mm-hmm. You're not. And, and, and in, in that space, that, I'm so glad you brought that up because <laughs> I talked about that in my book. It is when we're in that space that we injure our children. Yes. Oh my God. Particularly yes. when yes. we're, now you think 60% of black women, right? We're surviving sexual assault by the time we turn 18. We don't ever, we're not getting the help when it happens mm-hmm. as kids. No. Nobody's helping us. No. So nobody tells you that having a child is a trigger mm-hmm. when you're a trauma survivor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so you're, you're, but your focus is on them. Mm-hmm. And this is how we mix fear and love. We mix the messages. Right. Of fear and love yeah. with our children. Yes. You know, it's about here's my trauma. I don't want this to happen to you. Mm-hmm. I'm so focused on taking care of you that it looks like I'm going to put you in this box and mm-hmm. tell you mm-hmm. you have to be this way mm-hmm. out in the world. Mm-hmm. And we don't realize that we're injuring yes. our yes. children and we're clipping their wings. We're yep. clipping their mm-hmm. wings in that way. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's why it's so important to really, if you're not doing anybody any good when you're ignoring your needs. Right? Yes. It is not selfish no. to be for yourself. Yes. That's right. That's not right. at all. Mm-hmm. That yeah. is important. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, I just love, you see why I love these two so much? <laughs> it's the things that, it. these are things that um, I talk about a lot that it's difficult to find people that are connect or understand, mm-hmm. but it's almost like finding a community. This is what right. really the show is all about. It's about us talking about life and telling mm-hmm. stories, the power of mm-hmm. the stories that we all have. And when we realize that we're, when we create enough space to be vulnerable, mm-hmm. then yes. we realize we're standing shoulder to shoulder and we're all dealing with the same thing. Yes. Yeah. All um, these life struggles. Maybe just a different level, but we are. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that humanizes us. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's one of the things because I've dealt with uh, emotional trauma uh, from mm-hmm. my family, my mother, mm-hmm. her narcissistic behavior. Um, but what I've learned is to take that and look at her as a woman. Mm-hmm. She too is a woman, just as yes. I am trying to make it through life the best way that I can. You know, so uh, I, I, you know, I try not to judge and be very critical about it, but I know to keep my space yes. because of the toxic behaviors. But right. but I still hold space for her. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm so glad you said that. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I'm struggling with that too. Mm-hmm. You know, but the you know you you have to hold space for somebody that is toxic for you. Mm. Um, but <sighs> you, you know because you, but you know you have to separate mm-hmm. because it's it it's what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. You're going to continue to suffer. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then the suffering, it's needless. Yes. It, it, it disconnects you from your intuition. Absolutely. Yes. It makes it difficult for you to walk in your purpose. Right. Yes. So yes. what do you do yeah. other than take care of yourself? We have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My doctor told me because I was experiencing pain. Like, mm-hmm. where is this pain coming from? Yes. Oh my God. Like, where is the pain? You know what my doctor said? Honey, you need therapy. And I went to th- I went it's to the therapist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was the stress mm-hmm. of yes. of the rejection. It was the stress of trying to take care of her. It was the stress of just everything. So 
It is. I, I, I think the way, it work, the way it works is that the stress releases cortisol in it your does. body, yeah. and does. the cortisol is what causes inflammation. Mm -hmm. and, so, and for you to feel extremely fatigued. Oh yeah. my God, yeah. <laughs> extremely, yeah. and still never get enough rest. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's yeah. where I realized, you know, really alleviating myself in that situation, it released my body of that pain. Mm -hmm. You know, the last time y'all were here, I was walking around my house with my sleeve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you sure were. And I don't have it now. All right. <laughs> I'm so vain, y'all ain't know I got a cane, but I'm, <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm transparent at least about my challenges. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, I'm not walking with that. All of this flowing through my body, the inflammation was impacting the pain and the asthma. Yeah. 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 They, they, they were diagnosing me with uh, uh, inflammation of my joints. Yes. And. Uh, mm -hmm. So like, it, 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 yeah. And for what? So they said it was all of your joints. Yeah, the, it was autoimmune. They oh. said it was autoimmune. Like lupus. But it wasn't lupus. Something like it. It was something similar. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing acupuncture. I started going to therapy. Yes. <laughs> See, I keep writing this down. And, right. Uh, doing a lot of self reiki. Um. You know, and facing my truth. Yeah. And and removing. It's okay to, a lot of us come from families that are so critical, mm. so judgmental, and you feel like you have to take that because here we grew up in the Christian household, honor thy mother and father, honor thy mother and father. But I'm a firm believer, if I teach my children respect. I, yes. teach, I teach them compassion. I teach them these different things. So um, I honor them too because mm -hmm. they are my teachers. So uh, they, get to have a voice. they have to, yeah, yes, I didn't have a voice. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So yeah. absolutely. You, you, you give them those tools and, uh, you know, cause a lot of people think, well, I'm your mom. So yeah. you do as I say, you know, and it's like, you know, but you're not giving me the tools. How do you understand? It's not about, you can't learn from somebody telling you what to do. You mm -hmm. learn from understanding. Yeah. Right. You're going to okay. say something. I was just saying, you know, as the mother of four daughters, mm -hmm that, you know, I remember someone being so upset because my second daughter decided not to go to college mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sent me this long text message. Mm -hmm. She needs to do this. She needs to do that. I said, hold up. Mm -hmm. I raised my children to be free women. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they were free to make choices mm -hmm. of what yes. they want to do. They Absolutely. have a voice. Yeah. Yeah. And so for me to tell her I'm disappointed because you're not following what I intended for mm -hmm. you to do, that's not fair to her. It's not. I've had that experience. Mm -hmm. I've had that Absolutely. experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was forced to the military. Goes. I didn't want to go to the military. Mm -hmm. You going? Okay. So we have to be very diligent because these children that are coming in now here to change the vibration. Oh yeah. That's so right. we can't raise them like our foremothers yeah. raised them. Right. And, you know, we have to be a little <coughs> bit more open. <coughs> right. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. a value we have to have an understanding, and I think that's one of the things I find so frustrating is that. We have this tendency of doing things just because that's what our parents do. Yes. And we mm -hmm. think that's normal. Mm -hmm. We think it's normal yeah. to, to, to joke about ripping a branch off a tree, a switch, right. to get beat with. Mm -hmm. We think it's normal to joke about getting beat with an extension cord. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that's traumatic abuse. It's very traumatic. Mm -hmm. That's not yeah. funny. Physical and yeah. mental abuse right. is what that is. And so that tells me it really, people think that it's judgment. It's not about judgment, mm -hmm. but when you, when your mindset says that that's funny, that mm -hmm. tells me where you are mm -hmm. right, in your journey. Right. And, and, you know, mm -hmm. it's um, mm. not about judgment. Right. Yeah. It's just about being free. Yeah. That's it. Like that's I tell it. people all the time, one of the things I cannot stand is teasing. I don't understand the concept mm -hmm. of teasing mm -hmm. because that's like bullying someone. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you have parents who tease their children mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I have to. I learned that. Mm -hmm. I my son. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because he's thin. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And when he was little, I used to call him my little skinny mini. Mm -hmm. You know. And mm -hmm. then I learned when he was, I don't know, maybe a teenager, early teenager, he talked to me, and but I and I had to give him space for that. Yes. To hear it. Yes. Mm -hmm. He talked oh, yeah. to me and he said, "Mom, that hurts my feelings," and mm -hmm. I had no idea. Yeah. yeah. Because I just love him so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love everything about him. Yeah, you know his skin color. I used to teach him your your skin, I, and that's what I wrote in the book. Cause he was a dark skinned child, mm -hmm. and they used to call him Midnight. Mm -hmm. And when the first time he came home with that nonsense, I said, "No, baby, you look in the mirror. Your skin, you you have the skin like a a, a, a beautiful 
chocolate bar. Yes. yes. You know, and now I don't know because that ego, he, <laughs> he, he just, you know, you see him in the mirror. I see him on Instagram, you oh, know, goodness. modeling. He's okay. like all this melanin. Okay. You know? yes. But he loves his melanin skin. Yes. yes. But, but the important thing about what you said is that we need to be able to hear, our, our children need to be able to communicate with us. Yes. And yes. it's okay yes. if you don't know, mm-hmm. right? Because it's mm-hmm. not an individual thing. It's a cultural thing. Mm-hmm. But if you don't know, it just behooves you to hear it. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, if you want to have a relationship with your kids. Yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I don't like to each their own, but I don't like to whoop my children. Right. Because I feel like communication mm-hmm. does it. If we sit and we have that understanding, I don't have a problem. Right. So um not saying that I have not whooped, mm-hmm. but I just it's just not my first go to go to, right. yeah. you know. So um, you know, I didn't have a voice. Mm-hmm. My my fourteen year old has red hair. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my ten year old is as free as a bird. Yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love <laughs> to see it though. It, it, it's the same. Well, I remember when my two older girls were teenagers, and so they um, had mohawks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes hair might be blue, sometimes hair yeah. may be pink. But people say, well, "Why would you let them do that? It's mm-hmm. their body. Yeah. You know, is is if they cannot if if." They cannot use their hair for expression. Mm. Is that, you know, that's not fair to them. Right. Allow right. them to be freely who they are. Yeah, and we don't realize, I think one of the things we don't realize that we, you know, you look at, and I'm using this really loosely, but you look at white kids and black kids, and we'll say that's white people stuff. Mm. Yes, because and I see, got that, you I see, got that. Yeah, yeah. you see mm-hmm. a lot of white people doing that, right? Their kids, they do the blue and the mm-hmm. orange, mm-hmm. and yeah. that it's free. And the difference is, is they're not training their children right. to conform into this narrow box. Right. And I, I'm speaking very loosely, right. um, I'm, you know, culturally by far for mm-hmm. us, it is something that we are, we're, we're teaching our children to narrow themselves mm-hmm. about their hair, about yep. their appearance, because mm-hmm. for what's not present for them, not to say that white parents don't do it at all, mm-hmm. but yeah. what's not present for them is racial profiling, right. yes. is, you know, Absolutely. Trayvon Martin, you know, mm-hmm. you get shot because you got on the hoodie, right. you get shot, you get, into, you, you, you're, my son is, you know, he's, he's still not, he's not a big dude, not, not like a, right. he's, he's slim, mm-hmm. right. um, but he's dark skinned mm-hmm. and he has these locks and, you know, the beard and, yes. you know, the trend, even, and he's nice looking, right. But mm-hmm. he looks like a threat everywhere we go. Right. And father's me mm-hmm. still. That's him. I, yeah. have a, I have a 22-year-old son. Yeah. You have to have those conversations yes. before they leave that house. Right. But see, that's the thing, though, mm-hmm. that, that we have to find that space and the balance between having the conversations mm-hmm. of the reality mm-hmm. and then allowing them that space to be free. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. You know, how do we navigate that? Mm-hmm. What do you think? What do you think a solution is to navigate that? It, it, it is the ancestors. Yes. It is. Oh, that's okay. it. Is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> hey, that is that protection you stand with them. Yes. yes. Guidance yes. and protection. Yes. 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 We we have to tap back into that. Yes. Because yes. that is a I forgotten. Agree. You know, it's just it's forgotten. Our mm-hmm. ancestors are, are highly present. Yeah. And they and they, I. Hmm. And I'm telling you, I just feel so full right now <laughs> because everything you're saying it resonates. And this has been. You're describing my journey. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I talk about, you know, Yemaya, mm-hmm. Yemaya Oshun. Yes. Um, um, mm-hmm. it, it, for me, mm-hmm. I can feel that mm-hmm. energetic pull and yes. I know it because it's uh, what helped me understand it is, is for me, it's cruising. It's one of the reasons why I love cruising so much mm-hmm. because yes. there's nothing. I sit at the, uh, on the cruise ship mm-hmm. and I look out over the ocean yes. and it's, it is this, it is this communion, this mm-hmm. peace mm-hmm. that is so overwhelming that I cannot describe mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when I get in front of the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love it. Yep. It's a river. Have you been to Yellow River? Oh. It's a river not far from where I am. It's yeah. Here. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But you should check out Yellow River. Yes. Okay. The ocean is definitely. Yes. And yeah. it's Yellow River, too. Yeah. <laughs> Where is it? It's in Snailville. Yeah. Well, it's in Stone oh. Mountain. It's in Stone mm-hmm. Mountain, but it's it's not far. You can get to it mm-hmm. off of Park Ranch. Mm-hmm. That yeah, sounds like a place. Yeah. That sounds like what I've been looking for because I've been feeling in my, I, you know, when I do my photo shoot, I mm-hmm. wanted to kind of mm-hmm. connect in with nature in that way, yes. but I needed water. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're trying to get out. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We've done Reiki by the River there. Yes. Reiki by the 
River. Yes. Talk to me about Reiki by the River. <laughs> Look, I'm like, y'all have all these awesome offerings. What is this? Uh, so Reiki by the River is an event that we, we did, and it's, it's simply that. Mm -hmm. They will sign up, we will give them the location to come to, mm -hmm. and we would administer Reiki, Reiki. right there by the River. river. Oh, girl. And it we was need... so beautiful. It was just yeah. very beautiful. We need to do something like that. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm just every time I get around y'all, I just get so excited well, because one of the things that we're think what we are talking about mm -hmm. is going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we're definitely planning that, and yeah. we have several different things that we're planning. Oh man, I can't wait to see it. I can't. This just sounds. I uh, listen. Mm -hmm. This has been like really fantastic. Now. I'm going to ask a question of Sunshine. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if I, I know I asked you last time, but I don't know if I prepared you today. We, uh, you're a poet. I'm a poet. <laughs> but would you be willing to bless us with, with the peace today <laughs> before you get out of here? Because, you know, I wanted to capture, you know, something that captures all of this energy because we've talked about, you know, the feminine divine. We've talked about our self-care. We've <laughs> talked about a lot of things mm -hmm. that are really, really empowering to us all. But, you know, with the focus on women. May you bless I'll, I'll, I'll do a poem. Right. I will. Uh, I'll do a poem called him. All right. Um, I want his children to grow inside of me and teach mommy and daddy about their ancestors' lullabies. I want his cries to be interceded by me, whether we're making love from sadness or being happy. I want his touch to melt my imagination into puddles of ecstasy. I want him next to me while walking in rain showers for hours, wearing a white t-shirt so he can take a glimpse of my twin towers. I want him to devour tequila shots of me intoxicated just from the scent of my cozy rapture. I want to capture his six pack on my back while we attack the dance floor. I want him more than I did before. My last breath was in hell. I want his mail to be delivered to my address. I want his blessed soul to mate with mine. I want his kind and gentle spirit. I want his lyrics to speak with me. I want him mentally. I want him sent to me by my creator. I want his flavor tattooed on my lips. I want his gifts. I want his three fifths which in actuality really equals to his wholeness. I want his boldness. I want his barefoot dances of individuality to become my reality. I want his beneficial personality. I want him to chase after me, he and his boxers and me and my thongs. I want to sing him songs on my guitar. I want to meet him at the bar and pretend I don't know him. I want to blow him a kiss. I want to throw up my fist and be his Black Panther. And my questions, I want him to be all the answers. I want to meet him at the Tropic of Cancer on our first date. I want to relate to his dreams, his goals, his appetite. <laughs> I want him tonight, today, and yesterday. I want to lay and be silent with him. I want the cameras filmed to, film to capture still frames of us. I want his trust in conjunction with mine. I want time to fade into beautiful situations. I, I want to save this man's nation. With him right here with me. Ooh, that was beautiful. Oh my God. Thank you. Uh, that just, oh, I love that. I love that piece. Listen, I thank you all so much. I I, I thank you all so much for coming in today. I, I love when y'all come in the studio and I just love to hear the energy, the dialogue. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just such a connection because again, it resonates with all of, all up in my purpose, yeah. you know, all with you know, and I, I pray that we, 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 I think we're going to exercise our ashe in the most beautiful way uh, together. Um, yes, ma'am. Uh, for the people, I want you all to follow Harambe House of Wellness. Everybody, just give out your social media. Tell everybody where your platforms are. Okay. So, at Harambe House of Wellness, uh, we're on Facebook and we're on Instagram. We're also on Twitter at, at Harambe Sacred. Um, and to spell Harambe, H-A-R-A-M-B-E-E, -E, House of Wellness. Right. And then you also have your well, uh, your website, HarambeHouseOfWellness.com. Yes. That is yes. correct. Right. Listen, I, I'm so happy that <laughs> y'all came in the studio today. Mm -hmm. I love the energy. I love the spirit, the conversation. I'm looking forward to building community together uh, and, and, and just moving forward. Um, and I will leave you all with my slogan to uh, be intentional with your plans and manifest your best. See you next week, everybody. Ashe. <laughs>